Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today we are going to be messing around with FreeCAD again here. This is our second tutorial. I'm going to be showing you all how to do a proper model here. Now I'm going to show you a quick little sketch. I'm sorry about the handwriting. My handwriting is atrocious but bear with me here. As you can see here, I'm looking at it here myself. It is a um well, it's kind of hard to really tell what it is exactly just because I kind of thought about in some of mine It is a letter holder essentially. It's just something to stick on my desk It has this hexagonal shape here What I'm going to be doing here first is I'm just going to be showing you how to draw the part for the basic frame So we are going to go into the part design now uh, Just our little drop down box. We selected part in last episode want to go to part design and then once you first go into it You'll have an option to create a sketch. You can also select it at this top bar, this little uh, little square, red square and red circle and a piece of paper. So I want to do that now. I want to select our plane. Now with this, we're, first we are going to be doing this uh, hexagonal shape here. You see at the top of the piece of paper, and that and our Mike CAD <laughs> kind of ripping off the Dave CAD of EV blog. If you all watch that, and um, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead. Let's see. So first off. I want to do this. This will be along the X and or Y and Z axis, I believe. Actually, we'll do X and Z. That makes most sense. So basically, you want to select which plane you're doing it on out of the cube. So think about like how your 3D printer is facing here. Like this is the front of the 3D printer, and then Y and Z is the side, and then of course X and Y is like a top-down view. So first off, we'll want to do this X and Z as we're doing the front of this uh, organizer thing here. So I have some measurements lined up. What we do is up at the top. I'll right click to cancel out of any of these part design objects. I want to click on the uh, the line tool. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines. And usually if you get it fairly straight, it'll straighten it out. See this little uh, red bar? This means that it is a straight line. There's no angle to it. It is what we call a constraint, which is basically a property of the individual, um, I don't know, I guess line or, uh, ob or little piece here. Well, elements as they call it here. So, okay, we'll go by element just to simplify things. We got our basic uh, bottom object. Now I want to kind of do this like uh, these little jagged top parts. So we'll do this. And it doesn't have to be perfect because what we're going to do is we're going to constrain everything once we are finished drawing our basic shape. Now, as you can see as I'm drawing, once I go over these little dots, they turn yellow. You want to make sure they turn yellow if you want to connect the dots or to connect lines with each other or uh, elements with each other. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit of a pain to get it. Just uh, you can scroll in to zoom in, which I'm going to do right now. So we need how many of these little spikes So five of them. So we have four right now. So one more. And like I said, doesn't need to be perfect because we will constrain them. So this is our basic outline shape. Now what we we'll want to do is we we'll want to start doing constraints, which is basically defining like how long things are, where they're placed. So first off, this bottom bit needs to be 100 millimeter as per our drawing. Of course, I measured everything out the caliper. I like using that just to get the general scale, just using a digital caliper to figure things out. So now I'm going to go ahead and get some constraints for our uh, hex shapes here. Now this is a little bit tricky. But essentially, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and conf or define this here. So I'm going to do about it's 40 millimeter, which we're pretty close. I'm actually surprised how close we are. Now, what I want to do is I want to define each one of these by 40 millimeter. Now, there is a bit of a trick to this. Um, kind of losing it right now. But yeah, this probably isn't the best way to do it. I'm pretty sure you can shortcut this pretty easily. But yeah, I'm just going to do it this weird way by now. It will work. That's all that really matters. So yeah, essentially I'm just, uh, these little bottom bits of the spikes, I want to each be 40 millimeter. And then each of these, I want to be 25. Now this is kind of a weird shape to show you all, but normally if you have like multiple lines like this, like I could select this line and then this line, I want them to be equal, so I'll hit this equal button and then that'll make them equal links. That's normally what you would do in this situation. I kind of have like a weird shape going on with these hex or these uh, weird spikes. 
So I can't really get away with that too much. It's way too much, that needs to be 20. My math is off. Mm -hmm. Essentially, um, the program on the left here, as you can see under constraint sketch within 12 degrees of freedom, it will tell you if you're having like duplicates, which the program hates, so you don't wanna do any duplicates. In fact, I probably don't need to define this dimension over here because of just the uh, nature of the particular shape here. Yeah, it'll be fine, cause yeah, there's no way in heck it's gonna be able to change size with all those being defined. So there we go, we have that. Now, what we can do here is, I believe, this should be about, so we'll do this, these little arrows from point to point and not exactly from uh, from left to right. Of course, these, these other defining things, so let's see here, 10, I believe is what we want. Had to create a new little file here just to figure out what each of these sides measured out as. So what I did was I, I did this little hexagon tool up here and then I got one of the sides straightened out with this tool and then just did the same orientation essentially and I figured out it was 11.547. Of course, I probably wouldn't have been able to compute that in my head just because I'm not a madman. Okay, yeah, we'll go back into the correct file. Of course, if you have multiple tap or files open, you'll need to make sure to uh, go into the correct file or the correct file and the correct object you're editing if you switch between files in this program. It's a little bit weird, but okay, so 11.547. So we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're gonna control and then select each one of these shapes once they turn green. And we're gonna do equal just so we don't have to do the same thing we did with all the uh, the side to sides. So we do equal guys and boom, there you go easy as that so we have our shape but oh uh, it has two degrees of freedom so what does that mean well let's move around our part a bit if we can and yeah we notice they can move from left to right up and down well uh, technically from z up and down and x left to right so so what i want to do is i want to have this laying flat to where this part reaches the bottom of z so we'll select one point and then we'll select the bottom this little this is the zero point on the z-axis and then we'll do the uh, measure tool we'll do zero and then we'll do a symmetrical alignment on the other thing so we'll select the left or this side and then the opposite end of the little dots here and then we'll select this uh, green axis now instead of dividing a, a measurement we click this which uh, creates symmetry constraint so there we go now it is properly centered up so we know where everything is in relation with, to each other. So there we go, okay. So now we have that, our basic uh, shape here right now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and make this like a full solid object. So what we'll do is I wanna click the pad tool. So once you're done with the model, you just hit this close button and then you're on the task you're given the pad. You can also do it up here. And let's see, how wide do I want this? So I'm just gonna get out my calipers here. And I don't really want it too big because it's just holding letters and I don't want it to take up too much desk space, but I want it to be flat enough on the base. I'm gonna go about, um, I'm gonna say about, I'm gonna go about 30 millimeter. That should be uh, fine. Actually, I'm gonna do about 35. That sounds pretty healthy with the walls and everything printed. So there we go, we got our basic 3D shape now. So now what I wanna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to part we're gonna create a little cutout. So they can go to data to get the proper things and let's kind of zoom around and see. Okay, so there's our cube. It's kind of in a weird place. So essentially I want my walls, how thick do I want them? I'm gonna go about 2.5. So yeah, I want this inner wall, eh, 30, yeah. The only thing I wish is they would label these properly. Cause I don't really know like in relation X, Y, and Z, it just confuses me. Okay, so the height, that'll be about We'll just leave it at 50, it doesn't matter, it's such a cutout, it's not gonna really. And then length, that's gonna be at least 100. So okay, looks like we're gonna need to move this around a bit. So we wanna go ahead and move our x-axis. Let's go to position, x, I believe we wanna do negative 50 to match up. Okay, so excellent, excellent. And then for our y-axis, we will want to move it up 32.5 because we want our walls, actually negative 32.5, bingo. There we go, neat. That is, and then we're gonna need to move up Z a little bit just to get our uh, base a little bit more thickness. I'm gonna say about three. That that looks pretty safe right there, pretty decent. I want a little bit more reinforcement here. I'll go ahead and right click this toggle invisibility. I wanna kind of get a bit of a chamfer on these bottom edges here. 
Oops, so I'm going to select these two edges, just hold down control and select the other one. And we're going to go to chamfer because I kind of want a little bit more reinforcement. I'm going to go about two. We'll see how that looks. Oh, that, that's actually great. I like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, toggle invisibility on our pad object. Now we have a little bit more reinforcement on the bottom here. It'll print a few more layers to connect these two uh, edges to each other. So now that we have our basic shape cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one, then control select this one, and on part selection, we'll use our cut tool, and there we go. We have our basic shape here. So that is um, essentials on how to do the letter opener here. Now I'm gonna pretty it up, I'm gonna add those little uh, hexagonal cutouts in the bottom. Actually, I might just undo this whole circus rectangular cutout and make a little, and just flip this model over. Let's go ahead and do that here. That's a cool little idea. So you can, that's, you know, your basic cut and your chamfer feature. Looks, you know, that that on its own looks pretty cool, but yeah, let's let's pimp it out a bit. Let's get it going. I might make these walls a bit thicker now that I'm thinking about it. So that's pretty easy to do. You can just click on the pad and then length. Yeah, I want to go ahead and do like a, let's see here, an extra, I'm going to do at least three millimeter thickness here. So let's just do a 36. And then our chamfer will cube. I want to move it 33. Hey, there you go. It's a little extra thickness there. Looks pretty solid. So we'll just delete this. It just takes us back to what we had before. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just hide this for now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Yes, okay, well, that's fine. Now I wanna go ahead and just paste it. And of course, I'm gonna rename. I'm gonna so you can rename it. You can do two different ways. You can go down to label here in our uh, data, or you can just right click and rename it, and it'll uh, let you do it there. So this is the uh, main piece. And then we'll go ahead and do center cut i just like labeling things especially when you get really complicated in these models here things just get ridiculous so our center cut out we're gonna lower that pad by 33 like we did before and then we're gonna place it so i'm gonna first gonna rotate it and we're gonna be doing it on its y-axis so let's go ahead and go to axis um zero it out there actually you need See what I did? Uh, it's grayed out, so it can't do it. You have to click on the sketch and rotate it from there. So, good little example. So we're gonna do one. Oh, there we go, okay. Kind of weird, the iPads. This program has a bit of um, irregularity to it, but it should be okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and just, um, okay, so that's like pretty much right on the money there. So actually 46, okay, so 46, 47, 48. 49. There we go. So that's good three millimeter distance here. And then our Y, it's actually negative like 36. Okay, there we go. Neat. Let's go ahead and uh, do this little number. Don't hold down shift. Okay, cool. Now we got like a much cooler little uh, little bottom piece here. In fact, what, I'll, what I want to do is I want to lower this guy just a little bit so we can still, like I said, we can still do things. So I'm going to do about 47 on the height. I think it just, it'll give it like a two millimeter, or one millimeter border on the bottom, which is fine for minimum. Of course we have all that other chunky support bits. So that's actually a cooler way to do it in my opinion. I like this a lot better than the other method here. So yeah, a lot cooler. Of course, yeah, you get that cool little texture thing. So if you want to put like small little objects, they'll stay a little bit better in there. Shoot, shoot, you could probably put your change in there if you wanted to lower these hills a bit. So I might do that. I might make a cool little, like, small objects holder out of this, too, if I were to lower these walls a bit. So, yeah, there's other cool little ideas here. But that's, um, yeah, we're, we're actually running out a little bit of time. And, of course, so uh, what I'll do is in the next episode, I'll touch up on the little details and we'll print out the object here. So I just want to thank you all for watching here. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And check out some other videos here as well. Should be some popping up on the well, usually the left-hand side. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And stay tuned for the next episode of Free CAD Tutorials.